this one we're asked to solve this equation uh, using a matrix, okay? And we're going to use Gaussian elimination in order to do this. And what we want to do first is we want to understand what our goal is. And our goal is to have ones all along a diagonal on a matrix, okay? And so we're going to kind of work on that. And the first thing we need to do is convert this one here into a matrix. And the way that we do that is we take all the coefficients of each one of these and we'll put that all into one big matrix. And the matrix looks like this. This zero here came from the coefficient of the x. It's zero axis. Negative four came from my y, two came from my z, and then four came from the other side of the equal sign. Notice how you do put the, uh, the right hand side of the equal sign into that matrix. Okay, and this one, negative one comes from my x, five comes from my y, two comes from my z, and then the negative 20 comes from the right side of the equal sign. Okay, so I want to work with this one. So I'm going to take this one here and I'm going to move it over here to the left. And I made it small just because this is going to take up the entire page. So this allows us the most amount of room to work. Okay, well, the goal here is to have ones all along here. I want a one right here, a one right here, and a one right here. And I want all of these here to be zeros. Okay, so, well, this one's already a zero. So uh, it's not going to do me much good here. I need to move this here down. So it cannot be in the first row. We need to move it either into the second or the third row. Okay, so the way that I'll do that is I'll take this one and I'm just going to switch rows 1 and 3. And I'm going to completely switch these two around because it doesn't matter what order they're in. So I'll do that now. And you'll notice here whatever, what was in row 1 is now in row 3 and what was in row 3 is now in row 1. I just switched those two around. Again, the order does not matter. So this already gave me a 0 here, and I've got almost a 1, not quite a 1, uh, but we're getting closer. We're getting closer to what I want. Again, though, I want 1 in diagonals here. So the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to take and I'm going to combine rows 1 and rows 2. See, this is row 1 plus row 2, and I'm get, that's going to become my new row 1. Okay, and I'll do that because right here, when I do that, this becomes a 1. So that's my goal, if you will. Okay, so I've got, I'm just going to add these two rows together. 2 minus 1 gives me a positive 1. I'll fill that in right here. Uh, five, mi uh, 5 minus 5 gives me a 0, so that'll go right here. Negative 3 and 2, that gives me a negative 1. I'll put that right here. And then negative 20 and 21 will yield me a 1, so I'll write that in right here. Okay, so now I'm getting closer. I've got 1 here. I need to get another 1 here and a 1 here, and these all need to be 0. So we're getting closer. We're not there yet, though. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite these. I'm going to rewrite it down here. And what we'll do on this one uh, is we're going to combine uh, rows 1 and 2 this time, but I'm trying to get this one to be a 0. So I'm going to multiply row 1 by 2 and then subtract row 2, and that will become my new row 2. Okay, so the way we'll go ahead and walk through that now. Here's my row 1. I haven't changed that. My row 3 I have not changed either. I'm going to multiply row 1 by 2 and then subtract row 2. So this is going to be 2 minus 2, which will give me 0. I'm going to multiply this one by 2 and then subtract this. That will give me a positive 5. This will be negative 2 minus negative 3, which will give me 1. This one here I'm going to multiply by 2, so it will be 2 minus 21 would give me a negative 19. So now I'm, I'm on my path. I've got uh, two zeros here. I'm still looking for my ones all across here. So what I'm going to do here, I know that this one needs to be a one. And I see that this one's a negative four. So now I'm going to try to combine these two rows together. I'm going to pretty much leave row one alone because if I start combining these two together here, I might end up with another number here. And I just want zeros there. So I'm just going to work on rows two and three for a little while here. And I see if I can add these two rows together that I can get a positive 1 in row 2 in that middle slot, which is what I want. That'll work on my 1s and my diagonal. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add rows 2 and 3 together, and that's going to become my new row 2. And I do that here. 5 minus 4 gives me 1. Uh, 1 plus 2 gives me 3. And then negative 19 and 4 give me a negative 15. Okay, so now I'm going to rewrite that one down over here to the left just so that we have enough room. Okay, so we're working our way through. We've got a 1 here, a 1 here. I need a 0 here and a 1 here. So I need to kind of look at this and start thinking about what I need to multiply these by so that I get a 0 here and a 1 here. 
Well, if you look at this one, I can multiply this row 2 equation by 4 and then just combine these two, add these two together, and that will give me a 0 here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply this row 2 by 4 and then add row 3 to it. And that will give me my new row 3. So I do that here. So I multiply this one by 4. So 4, and then I just add it, minus 4 gives me 0. 3, and I'm going to multiply that one by 4. That will give me 12, plus 2 gives me my 14. Negative 15, okay, i got to multiply that one by 4, which would be 60. Negative 60 plus 4 would give me a negative 56, so that's where that came from. So I'm looking pretty good all along here. I've got my zeros lined up perfectly. I need this one right here to be a 1. In order for that one to be a 1, I'm going to have to divide by 14. So I'm going to basically take row 3 and divide it by 14. As long as I divide every part of that, it, was, it won't change its value. So if I divide both of those by 14, this position becomes a 1. Negative 56 divided by 14 is negative 4. Okay, so now I've done quite a bit of hard work. I've got it, my 1's all lined up in a diagonal, and that worked out really nice. Then I've got these three zeros here, which works out perfect. Now what I want to do is kind of just convert it back to an equation. Here's my original equation. I want to convert it back to an equation here and make it just a little bit easier to understand. So my equation here is this. Okay, this was a, my z position. z equals negative 4. That's where this comes from. This is 0x plus y plus 3z equals negative 15. And then finally up here I've got an x. I have no y. I have a negative z equals 1. So what we're going to do with this information, I know what my z value is. We need to plug this back in to find out what my other values are. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug it back into this equation right here. It's x minus z equals 1. And so I know my value for z. My value for z is negative 4. So I'm going to plug that in right here for this z. So I use that now. I'm going to plug it in. I get my uh, negative 4 for z. So this is x minus negative 4 equals 1. I'll simplify that one. I can find out what my x value is. Uh, move the 4 over to the other side, you find out that x equals 3. So I know my z value is 4, my x value is negative 3. Now I just need to find out what my y value is. And this is the equation that we'll use. We can plug it in. Uh, this one just has a z in it, so we're going to substitute our z in for that one. So let's bring that one up, and here's the same equation. Now all I'm going to do is plug in negative 4 for z right here, and then simplify it and solve it for y. Okay, so I have plug in my negative 4 right here. Uh, negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. So I've got y minus 12 equals negative 15. I move my 12 over to the other side. I find out that y equals negative 3. So now I have all three components here. I've got an x equals negative 3, y equals negative 3, and z equals negative 4. When I write these, I'm going to write these all in one parenthesis. And I will write them in alphabetical order. So it's x, y, z. So my x value is negative 3. My y value is negative 3, and my z value is negative 4, with a comma in between each one of them.